Hi again, Mike Mazzalongo here with BibleTalk.tv. This is the series entitled 10 Steps to the New Spiritual You, a small group study for mature Christians. And this is session number nine entitled Sacrifice. So we've come to the second to last spiritual discipline that helps create in us a godly and Christ-like character. Chuck Swindoll writes, If the disciplines we have studied were a mound of precious stones, then sacrifice is the diamond on top. No other spiritual discipline is more closely associated with the character and the mission of Jesus Christ than the discipline of sacrifice. Paul the Apostle writes in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If a person wants to become like Jesus, he or she must practice the discipline of sacrifice because this is what his life was about. No sacrifice, no resemblance to Christ. And so what is sacrifice? Well, think of someone you know, aside from Christ, who sacrificed for another or for a cause or an idea. For example, a parent who sacrifices for their child, uh, perhaps gives up a kidney to save their child. When I lived in California, I knew a young man who gave up part of his liver to save his mother who was dying of uh, cancer. In this or any type of sacrifice, you will note that, first of all, sacrifice is an action or attitude that violates our basic urge of self-preservation. Now, self-preservation is prompted by our human nature. However, sacrifice is prompted by our spiritual nature as Christians. Seeking godliness, we are continually called upon to not only make sacrifices, That is the best that the human nature can aspire to. However, as Christians, we are called upon to become living sacrifices. Again, Paul says in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. As Christians, the sacrifice of ourselves is pleasing to God because, like Christ, we choose freely to offer ourselves to Him in obedience and service. This is not imposed or forced upon us. Well, to cultivate the discipline of sacrifice, we have to practice it in three areas of our lives. First, personal sacrifice. Personal sacrifice begins with a choice. Who will we trust to meet our needs? And we naturally serve who we trust. For the Christian, the choice always comes down to will we trust God or will we trust self or someone or something else? The idea is that we sacrifice or give up trust in wealth, even our own, in order to trust only in God. We sacrifice confidence in human systems like personal abilities, government, and so on and so forth, We still use these because we are in and part of the world, but our trust is not in these things. You see, in the area of personal sacrifice, we practice giving up the natural human urge to protect and preserve and promote ourselves by ourselves, and we turn over that responsibility to God. For example, allowing God rather than ourselves to secure justice or vengeance for an offense against us personally. This is why we forgive and pray for our enemies, because God's vengeance on them is worse than ours. Let God's will be done, not ours. Number two, relational sacrifice. In Genesis 22 verses 2 to 12, Abraham offered Isaac. Isaac trusted Abraham and Abraham trusted God. God may not ask us to give up our children in sacrifice, but there are times when we need to give them up to God. We sometimes have to sacrifice their well-being to God, getting out of a comfortable situation or place in order to answer a call to service somewhere else. A relational sacrifice is the willingness to give up relationships that are either broken by sin like the prodigal son, 
or that are harmful, like bad influences, and give them up to God for His purpose. The natural human urge is to hold on and to try to fix things by ourselves. It requires the ability to make a relational sacrifice at times for healing to begin or even to be possible. And so far, we've looked at two types of sacrifice. First, personal sacrifice, the giving up or the urge to preserve and promote self and trusting God to care for us and to set us down where He wants us to be. And relational sacrifice, giving up the constant impulse to control or fix relationships according to our standards instead of his ways and his standards. All right, the third type is material sacrifice. This type of sacrifice involves generosity clearly expressed in the giving up of material things and personal advantages and comforts for the good of others. For example, Jesus gave up heaven to suffer the cross in order to save us. Our greatest fear in material sacrifice is that we will not have enough left for ourselves. Sacrifice will make us poorer or vulnerable or uncomfortable. Who or what are the true obstacles in material sacrifice? Well, a few to name. Satan, for example. He'll make you procrastinate using these fears and temptation to selfishness or other people who will accuse you of being unreasonable or too zealous, usually because sacrificial giving exposes their own lack of generosity, love, and faith, and your own mind and flesh, who are naturally disposed to preserve and maintain the status quo, not give sacrificially. Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows uh, that you need all of these things. Matthew chapter 6, verses uh, 31, 32, Jesus speaking the Sermon on the Mount. So, do we truly believe this or not? If we do, then we can sacrifice without fear or doubt. Only a few among us are called upon by God to sacrifice our lives as martyrs. For most Christians, the discipline of sacrifice is exercised one decision at a time until sacrifice simply becomes embedded in us as part of our Christian character. Well, that's it for session number nine. We have the usual discussion questions now that you can use for your small groups. I look forward to seeing you for our final session next time we meet. Bye-bye for now. Question number one. Describe the nature and reason for a great sacrifice you have made in your life. What part, if any, did God play in your decision? Describe, if possible, the results of your sacrifice. And looking back, would you make the same decision? Why yes or why no? Question number two. What holds you back from making material sacrifices? Question number three, how would adding a sacrificial element to your spiritual personality change you? Question number four, name someone who has or would sacrifice for you. Describe other elements of their character. Question number five, what sacrifice is still out of reach for you? What do you think it would take for you to make it?